the Eagles decided, John, that paying a veteran for the whole year was the way to go. They signed 40-year-old Josh McCown over the weekend. Is he the backup? Is he the third string? Is he battling with Kessler? Is he battling with anybody? Will he be here all year long? I think there's a lot of questions that need answering here because uh, I think that, uh, you know, we've talked a lot about, hey, when Sudfeld went down, the thought process was, well, he'll be back soon enough that you don't need to bring somebody else in. What changed the Eagles' mindset? Uh, well, as I said, hey, Josh McCown is here to be the backup quarterback. He is the backup quarterback. He's not competing with anyone. Uh, and as I said last week when I kind of said that when you were gone, Mike, if they sign a veteran quarterback, it says more about Nate Sudfeld than anything else. And it, it, it indicates they're not as comfortable uh, with Nate Sudfeld as they have looked in public behind the scenes uh and and that kind of borne itself out because you know when you start digging behind the scenes they had gotten into contact with josh mccown in july before nate Sudfeld was even hurt so uh this is a clear indication that they felt they needed a more veteran presence and this is a guy who started 76 nfl games versus nate Sudfeld, who has thrown 25 NFL passes. So they feel more comfortable. You can argue it. But, yeah, they weren't going to pay a guy. And understand, they paid Josh McCown $2 million up front. His entire salary is guaranteed anyway. So, yeah, he's here for the entire year. He can make $5.4 million if he has to play uh, a significant amount. He's the backup quarterback. Right, so Sudfeld obviously hurt, and, uh, you know, they got Kessler here. Now, was Kessler back today? I mean, is he still in the mix? Is Sudfeld around? I mean, is Sudfeld in trouble? I, I find it uh, – so you're essentially saying they're not very comfortable with Sudfeld being the number two option behind Carson Wentz. Exactly. Uh, and Cody was back today, so he's cleared concussion protocol. He was able to practice today, but uh, he's not going to make this team anymore. So the question is – what do you do with Nate Sudfeld? Uh, do you carry him on the roster? Uh, you, if you put him on injured reserve designated to return, that may, that means he's got to make the final 53, and then you put him on injured reserve. Uh, then he can come back. So they're not going to put him on IR now because that would end his season. So ultimately, I think they'll keep all three on the original 53-man roster, and that means – Carson Wentz, Josh McCown, Nate Sudfeld. But the bigger question and the bigger deal is if you need someone to play, whether Nate Sudfeld's healthy or not, Josh McCown is going to be that person who's going to get at least the first opportunity. Right. Now, Doug was asked today, he was asked, is it fair to say that Josh wouldn't be here if Nate and Cody Kessler were healthy? He said there's a good chance. Do you believe him? No. <laughs> and, and that's what I said. When, you, when these things happen, you, you have to look at what an organization does, not what they say. Uh, because obviously they don't want to insult Nate Sudfeld. But that's why you start calling people up behind the scenes and you start talking to agents, and you start hearing things like they were trying to talk Josh McCown out of retirement in July before training camp started. And that's, that's the bottom line if we want to use the stone called Steve Austinism. So if they're looking for him and asking about him coming out of retirement in July, that means they're not comfortable with Nate Sudfeld as the second-string quarterback. But what about when you look at, like, the third-string quarterback spot, John, and just, you know, having those arms in camp when you have these injuries, isn't that somewhat of a factor? Like, were they – at what point did the team sign Cody Kessler and not go the McCown direction? Because if they don't go McCown now, then who do they bring in? Like, is there a younger option? Or the bottom line is right now they just need an arm to get through camp, right? So yeah, at not, some point, that, you have to make that, a decision that, and say, all right, do we want the veteran? Or Yeah, that's not what Josh McCown is. If you just want a 
and armed to get through camp, A, Josh McCown's not coming out of retirement with no assurances, number one. Number two, if you just want a camp arm, you bring in a Luis Perez or somebody of that nature who was here in the spring, you don't guarantee somebody $2 million to practice for two weeks. And that's, again, where I say you do not look at what a team says, you look at what a team does. And that tells you where they are at the quarterback position. It tells you they weren't confident in what they had because if they were, they would have just rode with Cody Kessler. He's, he's through concussion protocol. He's at practice today. He's going to be available to play Thursday. If they were comfortable with Nate Sudfeld, because Cody Kessler is not vested, they could have kept him on the roster as the backup quarterback for two or three weeks, cut him, saved the money, and then went back to Nate Sudfeld as the backup quarterback. The fact that guaranteed Josh McCown $2 million to put pen to paper and gave him the ability to make $5.4 million tells you he's the backup quarterback. All right, so it's easy to kind of, I guess, assess that now in hindsight looking back and with the money they gave McCown, that's evident. But did you see this coming? Like before the injuries occurred, were there any red flags that you saw up at the facility or before the injuries where you're saying to yourself, man, this quarterback position outside of Wentz now is not what I thought it was? Well, and I kind of said it. I don't know if you were there last week or if it were Josh, uh, but I said it's all up to what they believe in Nate Sudfeld. How much do they believe in Nate Sudfeld? No one really knows except Doug Peterson and Howie Roseman. Uh, In public, they've been very supportive of him. If you go all the way back to the NFL owners' meetings in, in the spring, Doug had indicated he want, he didn't want to hand Nate the job. He wanted him to compete for it, and they weren't able to get a high-level backup. You're talking about names like Ryan Tannehill or Blake Bortles, and people can say what they want, but those are high-level backups. Uh, what they're not going to do is come into an organization to compete. So the Eagles were left with a Cody Kessler type They clearly don't have confidence in him. And as I said, (laughs) more than Cody, this has far more to do with Nate Sudfeld. And and the fact that this team was not comfortable with Nate Sudfeld being the backup quarterback. Uh, John McMullen is with us here, and Josh McCown was signed over the weekend. What about Thorson? I mean, he played okay. I mean, they drafted him. Does he go to practice squad? I mean, he's got no shot to making the team now, right? No, it's just a matter of – and he has been improved. He, he was okay today in practice as well uh, against the Ravens. So he has been improving. But he's been really bad up to this point. And uh, the Eagles kind of knew, knew that he's not ready. Uh, the only question is that they want to bring him back to the practice squad. Uh, he's not going to make the final 53. And I would say yes. Uh, if they get him through waivers, and I, I don't see why they wouldn't. Uh, Howie Roseman's history is he doesn't want to give up on draft picks that early. So ultimately, I do think he's on the practice squad. But this effectively nullifies his opportunity to make the final 53. All right. Now, there's a game on Thursday night. You've got Kessler coming back from a concussion. You've got Wentz, who hasn't played at all. You've got uh, McCown, who's 40 and has not taken a snap at all, I guess, to practice today. Um, and you got Thorson. So what do you anticipate seeing Thursday night at that position? I think you anticipate a lot of Cody Kessler and Clayton Thorson. Uh, the majority of that is going to be them. Zachers kind of gave the hint that they're getting so much work with the Ravens. Uh, you said he got about 50 reps today, the first team. Uh, you're not going to see him a lot. Doug might throw him out there for a series or two. Uh, and, and Josh McCown, as you mentioned, he did practice today. This is the second practice, his first real practice. So I don't think they're going to be throwing him uh, into the deep end either. So it's going to be a lot of Cody, uh, a lot of Clayton, and – 
not relevant to the regular season because those are not the quarterbacks they're going to be counting on. So what does this, what does the addition of McCown, you know, bring to the quarterback room? Because when, when I look at each key position's depth chart, th- there's, there's a key veteran at arguably all of the important positions. You have Sproles, you have Alshon Jeffrey and Djax. Now you have, you know, McCown in the quarterback room. You have Jason Peters in the O-line room. How important is that just for the locker room and Doug Peterson to have that veteran guy at each, you know, position for their respective rooms? Well, I, I, I don't know if it's that important for this particular team. I mean, they have leaders up and down the roster, but Josh is, I mean, he's been playing for 18 years. Everybody likes him no matter where he's been. He's one of those guys and also on Jeffrey who doesn't, talk a lot isn't a guy that is over the top let's put it that way said you know what a great guy he is everybody gravitates toward him things like that uh and he is really popular not only uh around the league because he's played for just about everybody but you you have to to last 18 years in this league as a quarterback you have to be a leader uh and that's what he is and that's kind of the, the mentality he gives off. But he's also 40. He's, he's not Nick Foles. But this will tell you how bad most backup quarterback situations are. He's talking to some people around the league. Comes in at 40 years old. Comes in after retirement. Comes in in his 18th season. He's a top five backup in this league from day one. And that tells you how bad the situation is is around this league as a whole and how much of a luxury the Eagles have had uh, for the past couple of years, they no longer have it. So this is about if you need somebody to win a game for you or win two games, maybe Josh McCown can do that. But if he's got to play 10 games, if he's got to play 13 games, 15, you're in trouble. But that's the case with Nate Sudfeld. Cody Kessler, and anybody else you would want to name. So Mike asked you a few minutes ago, John, how much of each quarterback will we potentially see in Thursday night's matchup? It's game three week where we saw starters play the most amount of minutes in any of the preseason games. So this week, are you keeping an eye out just from the NFL standpoint as a whole around the league as to how much starter time we could see? And if that impacts a potential change in the preseason in the future? Well, I think the change in the preseason has more to do with if they can get to 18 in the regular season. The NFL doesn't want to give up the revenue. That's the bottom line. So it will continue at the current pace uh, as long as they they stay at 16 games. The preseason's not going away. Uh, if you're talking about how much are people going to play, that's that's been dropping each and every year, and it continues to drop. A little bit old school versus new school. Some of the old school coaches uh, still play their starters a little bit more. Uh, but as we trend in that different direction, uh, and you're seeing it up close with the Eagles, they just don't value it. And it's pretty consistent uh, from Big Buddy. They value practices more. And especially when you're able to have joint sessions uh, like the Eagles are currently having with the Ravens, they just see that as more valuable because you can script the work you want to get done uh, against a very good defense, the top-ranked defense in the NFL last year. They just find it more valuable. John McMullen, so uh, let, let's, uh, you wrote a piece today. You mentioned McCown. He's 40. Um, and you mentioned him as a top five backup. Uh, today, Doug Peterson, I guess it was today or yesterday, Peterson was asked if they considered uh, Colin Kaepernick at all. Uh, he said, we considered everybody. Do you actually take him at face value that they actually consider that option? No, I, I don't. And it's part of the thing that uh, he was not in the mix uh, from all indications, nor should he be. Uh, He hasn't played an NFL game in nearly a 1,000 days. Uh, But as an organization, you know you're getting the question because it's not about football. It's about politics. It's about ideology. So people are going to bring it up. 
so I, I think the conversation was, we know we're going to get this question. How are we going to deal with it? And Doug deflected it uh, very succinctly uh, and moved on as quickly as possible. Uh, and and I wrote a piece, and I encourage everybody to read it at 973ESPN.com. It kind of explains the whole situation, not just uh, about Colin, but also about Josh McCown and how they came to the conclusion that that's the quarterback they wanted, how they contacted uh, his people in July before Nate Sudfeld was injured, uh, and, and it gives you their way of thinking. But from a football standpoint, no. You're not going to bring somebody in who hasn't played a game in a thousand days because the whole your whole issue with Nate Sudfeld is he's only thrown 25 passes. They wanted a veteran. They wanted somebody who's got those 76 starts under his belt who can learn an offense very, very quickly. That's that's not the description of Colin Kaepernick. Yeah, and uh, obviously um, one of the big things with him is whether he fits this Eagles offense at either. I mean, it's one thing to say he's more talented, which I don't think is really, I mean, shouldn't really be much of a discussion. He's more talented than guys that are on the street that were options for any team. Forget the Eagles. It's whether or not he would fit, you know, what the Eagles do here, and I'm not so sure that would be the case. Well, it depends what your definition of talent is. If you're talking about athleticism, certainly, but you could argue that Colin is more athletic and more gifted than Tom Brady. Is he a better quarterback? No, that's silly. Uh, So it it depends on your definition uh, and how you want to phrase it, Uh, but it's really difficult. And I also kind of pointed out, if you're talking about the 2013 Colin Kaepernick, no question. But he's in this league, and he's a starting quarterback in this league. I think people forget in 2016, uh, he was coming off three surgeries. Uh, He did not rehab with the 49ers. Uh, That's the reason he didn't start the season uh, as the starting quarterback. He wasn't the same guy physically as the guy in 2013. And I think people who give those, and I'll call them what they are, disingenuous arguments, are talking about the 2013 Colin Kaepernick. Well, anybody who follows the NFL knows that just because you're a star in 2013 doesn't mean you're a star in 2019. He's a different guy. He's a different player. No question, yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Well, I, and know, I will say, I will say, I will just throw this to the mix, John, to get to get your take on it. Is once upon a time the Eagles signed Michael Vick, who had not played in three years. Now that first year, he didn't play all that much, but by the second year, he was the starting quarterback and was in the MVP conversation. Yeah, and it's not to say that if if he gets somewhere and he. And he uh, gets back to where he was physically, that he could never be a top-tier quarterback in this league. And that's where I brought up that, yeah, the off-the-field stuff does matter. It mattered with Michael Vick. There's only one organization that probably would have signed Michael Vick, and this was it. And he had, the, and he made the most of his second opportunity. Colin hasn't gotten that opportunity, but I think if you're going to blame the Eagles and say, well, you signed Michael Vick, so you have to sign – Colin Kaepernick, it doesn't work like that. Each situation is different. They received a lot of criticism for signing Michael Vick, including from me, because anyone who knows me knows I love dogs. So I was not happy with that. Uh, but it, it, the comparison is apples and oranges. The assumption that you signed a pariah in some people's eyes, and therefore you have to sign every single pariah, is kind of silly. Right. Uh, real quick, Brandon Brooks still not ready for team drills over the weekend. Uh, is there less and less optimism that he will be ready for the start of the season? Well, there should be. Uh, I mean, you look at the calendar, and Brandon himself said he hoped to be cleared for team drills uh, Wednesday of last week when he was uh, undergoing a medical evaluation, and he wasn't. Uh, so from his standpoint, he had hoped to be cleared. Hmm. Uh, he said there's no setback. He said there's the plan, but that's not what he said last Wednesday. 
Uh, so clearly, he's a 350-pound man. He's he's about seven months off a of torn Achilles. That's a we talked about it a lot. That's a tough time frame uh, for week one. That's always been his goal. He can still get there. He's a veteran player. He doesn't need. We just talked about preseason football. He doesn't need it. Uh, if he can get to practice with a week to go, that's Fletcher Cox's goal as well. That's Nigel Bradham's. That's Ronald Darby's. And that's the thing you have to keep an eye on because the Eagles have a lot of rehabbing players that they are holding back for week one of the regular season. And that also includes Layden Johnson and Dallas Goddard, who started healthy, and the Eagles shut them down. It's a different world we live in there, John. <laughs> yeah, and I, I you know, I, I get a lot of blow black, blowback when I say the preseason doesn't matter. I, I mean, it's not my perspective it's their perspective and they show it by everything they do and the fact that they are very very cautious with the veteran players and they're not concerned about getting them preseason reps they they find practice more valuable and that's the eagles that's not me yeah well yeah it was funny because we played earlier that famous dennis green line where he said you know we the, we, we know who we, they are really who we thought they were uh the bears he said we played him in the third preseason game. Everybody plays their guys in that game, and, we, you know, we hung with them. Uh, how different things are now, because you would anticipate that the Ravens and the Eagles have been practicing together all week, that both teams might just say, eh, we've seen enough of each other all week. We're not going to do any – we're not going to put anybody out there, both sides. Yeah, and I think that's kind of the goal. I, I would be – just from the standpoint of how cautious the Eagles are with Jason Peters and, and Jason Kelsey – and as I mentioned, Lane Johnson has already shut down. Brandon's not back at practice. So that is 80% of your starting offensive line. And we just talked about the backup quarterback situation. And you shouldn't be confident in Josh McCown, Nate Sudfeld, Cody Kessler, Clayton Thorson, or anybody else you want to put off the street. So I just asked people, would you put Carson Wentz out there? I would not. All right, uh, we'll see it all happen Thursday night, the preseason game number three, which in the past had kind of been that that Go night where game. you got to see everybody for an extended amount of time. Does it sound like you're going to get a big view of this 2019 Eagles outfit? And we'll have more on Football at Four tomorrow at J.F. McMullen and read more uh, about Josh McCown in the weekend and everything else that's happening at the Eagles practice at 97.3 ESPN. Dot com. All right, John, we'll talk tomorrow, pal. All right, thanks, guys.